Hey guys, uh, I was asked if I would show when I make my new art journal how I did it and explain the steps that I take for uh, doing the stitching, the, the binding part. Um, I started with different audio but it got messed up so I have to do a voiceover so I apologize for that. Uh, also I sped up the, the beginning of the video here where I'm sorting through my papers, I've cut them down to size based off my last art journal and then I cut them in half and now I'm just folding them um, to have something to stitch together. The rest of the video is in real time I believe I've got going right now um, and I've played with it somewhat so I can get it as close to the camera since my camera doesn't have a zoom function. Um, I've tried to get it so you can see what I'm doing, but it's an awkward process because I'm not used to making the book. I usually do it hanging half off my, my table, um, but holding it up and trying to show that uh, was very awkward. And I make bigger books usually, so um, I, I end up hugging them and stitching and, and it's crazy. But this is how I do it uh, for the most part for my art journals that I make myself. I'm using Canson... Uh, watercolor paper. It's a 140 pound paper. It came in a huge roll um, the the mystery had found for me off of Amazon um, and this is the last part of the roll that I had left. Um, but I cut it down roughly to the size that I, I need it. Uh, I don't do any of the pre-stretching. A lot of the, the big rolls of, of water paper people will uh, wet and um, you know stretch out lay flat way down until it's dry and whatever I don't do any of that um, okay here I'm counting through roughly how many papers or pages I've got so I can work out um, if I want to stitch them individually or make actual signatures with uh, I think I went with two yeah, looks like two, and I believe the last set was uh, three uh, folded pages. And some of these you'll see the edges torn or jagged, and some are straight. Um, you can go back through when you get this all together if you want to cut it down and make it all straight, or tear the edges, or whatever you want to do. I just go with the flow. Um, I'm kind of checking it out for size and if I like it and uh, starting to pick the thread that I use. Um, I will use whatever scrap yarn or thread that I have. This particular book I went with uh, embroidery floss because I have that huge bag of it there. Um, I don't particularly measure any of it because I you can stitch, or if you run out while you're stitching, you can add to it, just tie off a new section of thread and, in a knot and call it good. Um, here I roughly lay out, make sure my spines are all even. I usually eyeball a center and this one I'm doing five holes. So it's a center, um, come in a little bit from the top and the bottom and then there's usually a um, half between the end marks and the, the center mark. Then I just, because these are several page signatures, I just put clips in there uh, to hold each one together. That way they, they, they shouldn't shift too terribly. Um, and they are slightly different size pages, so I'm not too concerned about it in this particular book. Now I start with the bottom of the signatures there. I do this for every book. I have no idea why. It's just how I do it. Um, and I usually take that signature, open it up, and then hang it off the edge of my table and punch the holes with my needle. Um, I do that because the table lends more support towards the edge of the spine there and with thick papers like the Canson watercolor in the 140 pound, it's really tough paper. Um, so it's easier to, to punch through. Uh, you can do it with an awl. Uh, sometimes they do it with an awl with a mouse pad underneath, but I have no idea what I've done with my mouse pad. <laughs> so I just get a 
big chunk of, of thread, thread it through a reasonably large eyed needle. Um, I believe that's a darning needle. Uh, it's from a, a mixed set that I've had for years and years and years for doing uh, heavy duty projects like upholstery and canvas and I believe there's a leather work one in there. I just do a knot several times in the end there. Well, it's one knot, but it's wrapped several times. And make sure you've got space because um, you move, or at least when I do it, I, I move this around a lot and you end up knocking everything off your desk. Um, so it's crazy. But we're going to start punching holes in no particular order just off the edge of the table there and kind of wiggle your needle around a little bit um, especially in this beginning one because your threads coming through we're going to go out one direction and come back in later in the same hole so you want just enough so that you're not accidentally putting your needle through the thread itself you want your thread to lay next to the previous thread you, you pulled through I promise this isn't as technical <laughs> as it seems um, and once you get the hang of it, uh, it it really does become really really easy uh, I avoided making books for a long time because I thought it was a lot harder than it is and now that I've, I've done a few um, yeah it, it just it's not terribly difficult but we're starting on the outside at the left there pull the thread through if it gets tangled or knotted up just back the thread out a little bit um, and it usually clears itself but we're going from the outside to the inside and then we're going next hole down inside to the outside check for knots and, and catches you want it snug but not so tight that it's pulling or tearing your paper and then from the outside back to the inside and this is probably going to be quite boring and I apologize but I find repetition the only way to uh, really tell you how wh what it is that I'm doing but next hole down inside to the outside we're not doing this for every set of signatures this is the I believe it's called a kettle stitch knots will happen take your time back it out a little bit sometimes you can pull it or wiggle it and and it will come undone but take your time with when you get a knot it's frustrating and it happens to just about everybody i believe at, at one point or another but some people use a waxed thread um i haven't done that yet i keep meaning to pick some up or make some but I don't know if that's actually any easier or prevents that. Okay, pull it snug in the last hole outside towards the center of your book. Pull it through. Check for knots and snags. Now we're going back through the previous hole from inside to outside. And again, this is our startup row um, for good reason inside to outside now we're going outside back through inside back up your thread if it gets caught next hole up inside to outside and make sure that you're, you're getting your needle through the hole not through the previous thread um, it, it won't be too big of a deal but I find that it weakens the threads that you have um, and doesn't give your book as much freedom as it otherwise would Okay, now we're coming to the last one where our knot is. What we're going to do, at least this is how I do it, is wrap the thread. We're going to tie it around the underside, the book side of that knot. And sometimes this takes me a couple times to get right. Um, it is a pain. It takes longer than, you know, one would hope. I got it pulled too tight. Uh, too early on here so I had to undo it and that happens you just got to take a minute um, if you can't wiggle it loose definitely um, 
take your take a minute undo the knot and then give it another go I'm just using my, my needle to help undo that if there are small children in the room or people that don't like cussing at this point make sure you don't do books where other people can't hear you you end up muttering to yourself like a mad person honestly it's hilarious okay here I'm just taking that knot out because we made a knot and I was able to loosen it over the, the previous knot that we're trying to tie it around um, but it made an actual knot in my thread which we don't want because then we can't pull it through the, the paper so it's time consuming this part when, when you mess it up a little bit but it's worth taking a minute to fix it now before there's an issue later and yeah just to keep it real I could have edited this out but um, I want you to be aware this stuff does happen okay got our knot out of the thread now <laughs> attempt number two wrap the thread snugly under the previous knot the beginning knot that we started with and just tie a simple knot underneath, get it snug. And then I usually tie it again right under that, that very beginning knot, um, just to tie it off. And this helps keep that first signature together while you're messing around getting the second one ready. And pull it snug. Okay, that is our setup row signature. I find bulldog clips. Um, I call these ones bulldog clips. I don't know what they're actually called. But um, I find them excessively handy for doing this project. Um, just to hold everything together. I've seen people do this in an actual book binding press. When you grab your next signature, make sure it's from the bottom of the stack. I do that because that's the way all the, the marks were made for, um, for where we're going to punch our holes. Again, pull the, the signature off the edge of the table and poke holes and wiggle. Take your time. Make sure you know where your fingers are or anything underneath you because I would hate for you to hurt yourself doing this and I've done it and it's not fun. <laughs> now we're going to keep this signature open. We're going to line up the spine as best we can and clip the rest the, the back edge of that signature to the previous signature just to keep it from moving or sliding around too terribly much I don't do this in a precise fashion um, sometimes I have to readjust as I go but just to keep it mostly stable especially for the second second signature because we start doing um, a, a different format in, in the stitching so now we go outside to inside, pull it through, make sure it's snug, inside to outside, and watch your thread, it likes to get caught on the clips and the corner of your papers, and it's a pain in the butt, <laughs> but inside to outside, pull it through. Now this time, we're going to go under our previous edge on one side of the previous stitch or the previous hole and then we're going to come up on the other side like so we're going to do this for every hole for each of the rest of the signatures make sure you have no knots and tangles and then go down the hole that we just came out of so we go inside to outside, under, around, and back through the hole. 
pull it snug. When you get this done, it, it will make a pretty row. If you're familiar with knitting, it looks like a um, knitting rows or columns. Same thing. Next hole, inside to outside. Under the previous row. Around. Go under the other side. Pull your thread. Make sure you've got no knots or tangles. And in through that next hole or that hole that we just came out of so we're coming out and going back in the same hole for the center stitches we do something slightly different for the uh, stitches on the, the top and the bottom of the book there okay you still with me I know it seems like a huge pain in the butt but it really really is easy I promise if I can do this anybody can do this okay next hole inside to outside pull it snug under the previous stitch go under around back under and through the hole we just came out And that's slightly off camera there, and I apologize. There we go. And pull it through. Make sure it's snug. Now this, the end holes we do slightly different because the end ones are where we're going to attach our new signature. So what we do is we come up through that hole We go under the previous stitch there. Pull it snug. Come back behind the stitch we just made so that it wraps around the, the first signature stitch as well. Make sure it's snug. You can put a knot there if you want to, but sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I don't really have a rule for that as long as you have, in fact, wrapped it. Your next signature, pick from the bottom of your pile. Start with poking your holes first. Give it a good wiggle so that you can uh, fit your threads through just so. Um, I did the five holes. You can do as many as you want. The, the recipe stays the same. Line up your spine best you can. And hopefully without moving it too terribly, put the back half of your signature clip to your previous signature stack. Just enough to keep it from, from shifting too terribly. The reason I do the kettle stitch, or the, the kettle binding, uh, I believe it's called kettle binding. That's what I know it as. Um, I do this because the journals themselves the pages when the pages are open they lay reasonably flat um, it, it gives you a lot of movement in your book some people don't like the gaps that it makes in between signatures you can always tape that um, and I, I, I quite like it but this is what we've got so far now we're going to start at the bottom end or on the right side making sure that's still snug We're going to go from the outside to the inside. And we're working right to left this time. Pull your thread through, make sure it's snug but not tangled or, or too tight. 
find your next hole up inside to outside this is our third signature so what we're going to do now is go under the previous stitch in between the first and second signatures and this takes a little finicky work see right to left we went under the stitch of the previous signature this will make sense once you get it all done I promise pull it through make sure you have no snags cinch it down reasonably tight and go down the same hole that we just came out of so outside to inside now in the second hole next hole up oh we got a snag Let me back that out a little bit there we go now we're gonna repeat we're going in between the first and second signatures underneath the previous stitch pull our thread through make sure there's no snags or catches down the same hole that we just came out of Okay, next hole up. This is still a central hole. The, the three holes in the middle are, are done the same way. So inside to outside. Under the previous stitch in between signatures one and two. Pull it snug. No knots or snags. And down the hole we just came out of. Outside to inside. Check for snags or catches. And on the last hole here at the top of the book, pull our thread through, make sure it's snug. Now we're going under the previous stitch, or the previous signature knot that we made. We're going to pull it after I get it <laughs> unhung there. Pull it, make sure there's no extra tangles or knots. Wrap around the previous signature stitch. And you can throw a knot in here if you want to at this time. And there's our first three signatures. We got a little movement in the book and I'm perfectly okay with that. Um, I, I tend to leave it a little bit loose because if you start adding things or chunky stuff to your book um, it does the gator mouth at the front of the book so I like to leave the spine a little open. Okay signature number four grab from the bottom of the stack line it up as you need it or want it poke your holes give a little wiggle okay I'm gonna line it up as we have the previous ones starting with our spine edge and clip it to leaving the signature open we're going to clip it to the, the back half the back two pages of that signature to the previous signatures now as your book starts getting fatter and chunkier um, you can't always with the little clips they don't take up the all of the pages it's perfectly fine to just get as many as you can for that clip to hold the newest signature to the previous ones Just work with what you got and whatever's clever. Um, in my art books, I'm not being precious with at all. Um, I like them really handmade, grungy looking. I think it's more time consuming to set, to set up the newest signature. Um, but you really don't want it to move too terribly much. 
and I don't clip it way up close to the spine there because I do want enough um, space between the signatures because we're running the, the thread through. So we've got a little space there to work with. Okay, find your needle again. Make sure there's no knots in your thread because they like to do that while you're not looking. We're going to start, I believe, on the left, the top of our book, down that hole. And this will be, this signature will be sewn the same way we did the third signature. Um, just left to right instead of right to left. So down that hole, up from inside to outside on the second hole down. Make sure there's no knots or catches. We're going under the previous stitch between signature, what is that, two and three. So you go under and back up and it gets a little snug. You might want a curved needle. I keep meaning to try it with a curved needle. I just haven't done it yet. Watch for knots, back out your thread if you get a tangle and down the hole we just came out of, so outside to inside now. Then we've got a little catch, so back it out a little, pull it through again, make sure it's it's all good. Okay, next hole down, watch where your arm is. If you're not, not paying attention, you will poke yourself. It's not a good day. Make sure that's snug under the previous stitch. So we're going between signature two and three. It makes a, a post. So under two and three. And it doesn't really matter if you go left to right or right to left. I think I change it up um, depending on the direction I'm going. Pull it through, make sure you've got no catches. Next hole down. Still a central hole. Those those three holes in the, the center. So we're going under the previous post. Make sure it's snug. Yep, see this one I went left to right. So it doesn't really matter. But what you want to make sure you're doing is getting under the previous outside edge stitch. So you're going between signature two and three under that stitch and then back down the hole that we just came out of. It really is very easy to do and it's really really pretty. Watch your fingers inside to outside on the last hole. Under the previous stitch again and you can either just pull it snug or go around a couple times or tie a knot. You, you really have a lot of preference here. And it looks like I tied a loose knot, so. Okay. Make sure it's snug. Okay. And that's how our stitches are lining up. They make their own posts and they're very, very pretty. <laughs> I like to do this with variegated yarn that changes color as you go. Um, it just adds interest to your binding. Next signature taken from the bottom of the stack. We keep that recipe the same every time. Make sure our pages are where we want them to be. Um, okay, poke our holes. Hopefully you've kind of got a, a feel for it at this point in time. If you guys have any questions, please, please let me know. Um, it really does come down to just practicing. Um, I do recommend starting on a much smaller book than this. Um, uh, let's see, I have my book here. I believe it's, what is that, eight maybe? about eight inches from spine to edge and 13 inches tall 
um, which is smaller than my previous art journal but I would go even uh, a little smaller um, just to get the hang of it maybe a 4x6 or 5x7 um, it's easier to, to handle and to hold the book at that point okay so we're lining up our spine as the book gets fatter uh, it gets more signatures and gets chunkier um, this part tends to take me a little time uh, that in part is I have uh, carpal tunnel issues with with my wrist so um, by this point in time my hands really are well they're not my friends honestly <laughs> um, they start having a mind of their own and not doing what I want them to so I start slowing down with most projects at this point but say lovey carry on and all of that and you'll notice I, I clipped the books or I clipped the new signature that we're going to work on slightly differently each time depending on um, how it, it holds up but I still make sure that spine edge isn't clipped too close to where we're working that way we have a lot of wiggle room because it does get snug the further up you go oh and it's starting to look beautiful <laughs> Okay, so we're starting at the bottom end of our book. Poke down, outside to inside, pull through. Make sure it's snug. Next hole down. It's a central hole, one of our center three. So inside to outside, make sure that is snug because that bottom edge because I hold the top edge, the bottom edge seems a little looser uh, about this point in the book, so I try and make sure that, that we take care of that. Okay, under the previous post between, what is that, uh, three, the, the third and fourth um, signature, <laughs> sorry brain fart, um, and yeah, it's, my hands are getting tired, so I start dropping my book and things like that, that's just... Uh, that's just me <laughs> um, but it happens it's no big deal okay so we went under the post of signature three and four and back through the hole we came out go down to our center hole inside to outside make sure it's snug no catches oh I almost look at that I almost <laughs> messed that up and it wouldn't have made too big of a deal but yeah under the previous post starting to get snug so um, take your time getting under there and back up and then down the hole that we just came through there we go <laughs> okay next hole down is one of our center three so we're going to do that again from inside to outside under our previous stitch between the third and fourth signature little wiggle sometimes you have to manipulate your your spine there to um, allow room for that needle to come through um, that's where a curved needle probably is way more helpful down the hole we just came out uh, at this point if you've kind of got a feel for it or just want to jump ahead and see what it looks like at the end be my guest you will not hurt my feelings okay last hole for the fifth signature inside to outside pull snug under the previous stitch between the third and fourth signatures and you can just pull it taut or you can make a knot what did I do here looks like I'm going to make a knot okay so you can tie it off um, and I change this throughout the book. It's not just book to book I do differently. I just, whatever mood I'm in, it's all good. There, there are no, no specific rules, I guess. Um, and unless you're going for a very specific um, look, it shouldn't matter too terribly. Last signature. Um, poker holes. Make sure you still leave wiggle room there as you're poking your holes. 
We're going to work on it from left to right this time again. The previous art journal that I made actually was just the text block. When, when you stitch pages like this and it's just pages with no cover yet, that is known as a text block. Um, yeah, and I didn't put a cover on until the end of, of my uh, book. Oh, hang on, my computer's having an issue. Huh. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, back again. My computer turned itself off because apparently it's too warm. Okay, where did we get to here? Last signature. Okay. I had hoped this video would be a lot shorter than it is, but honestly, this is how long it takes me, or how long this one took me to do. So, um, other than speeding up the, the beginning, this is how long it takes. Um, which, you know, for those of you that already craft and such, you, you know art takes time. Um, oh, that's right. I had an issue with this top one um, and decided to try and, and flip over and see if my lines would, um, or if my dots for my hole making would line up better. Um, for some reason, they just seemed off somehow. But um, I, I just flipped my signature upside down and they did in fact work better that way. So, um, yeah, I ran with that, set up my spine again. Um, because my book's already chunky, I didn't worry about clipping all of the previous signatures together. So I'm clipping the top, the back half of the top signature to just random chunk of previous signature. See? Because my clip's too small to do the whole book and that's just fine. It works just as well. Okay, track down our needle and thread again. Make sure we don't have any knots. We're going from left to right, outside to inside. Watching for fingers. Please do not hurt yourself doing this project. Um, I got the tail edge of my previous knot. I just uh, got caught up there, so I pulled it out. Inside to outside. You'll notice how I start holding the book at this point because it's getting heavy. Um, I, I do a lot of hugging, so yeah. Okay. We're going under, what is that? The under the previous post stitch we made for between the fourth and the fifth signature. We got under one side, up the other side, and then back through the hole we came through. Pull it taut, make sure we don't have any knots or snags. Next hole down, being careful not to poke our arm. It does happen. <laughs> okay, inside to outside, under the previous post stitch. it snug down the hole we just came out from the outside to the inside I'm really hoping that this has helped um, helped you understand what it is that I'm doing um, I, I don't know a, a different way to show how to do this um, I may have to try and set it up on the table. Uh, there's a close-up of the under the, the previous post stitch. Um, but I may have to see if I can't set it up without knocking the camera off the table proper. Um, because usually my camera is hanging from a selfie stick crudely attached to the wall. <laughs> it's, it's very fancy. Here I had an issue with my thread. Um, I want you to be aware this is a thing also. Um, sometimes threads just break, or especially with mine, they're, they're really, really old threads. Um, you know, they've been sitting in a bag for God knows how long. Uh, that set actually was gifted to me years ago and it's just been sitting there ever since. Um, so now I have 
what was a full strand of um, embroidery floss I had two or three strands break and that's those that right there what I did was decided to carry on and then you can always go back and fix those later and I'll show you how I did that or you could knot them and trim them um, where they are as well you, you have options there okay so I went out the last hole and if your threads break as mine did that's a lot thinner so you have to be very careful when you're pulling things tight now because it's really easy to snap the rest of those um, made a couple knots And once you get knots made, you could just trim your thread and leave it there and your book would be done and that's fine. I tend to go back through under and around each previous stitch post that we made that's in between the signatures. Um, under and around, come back down to the next one, under and around, come back down to the next one, under and around. Um, knotting the thread on itself um, and then I run the needle under the setup thread going from left to right um, with it at the top there I run the needle under the the first row of setup threads that we had and pull it taut and then I come up under the, the next post stitch which is actually between um, the first and second set of signatures and I apologize if you get confused I flip my book around um, over and over again but we're still heading from one end to the beginning end um, run your thread under the next um, section of thread that started the book under the next post stitch back around so that it's all holding itself tight. You do not have to do this part. Um, I tend to do it just for peace of mind um, and this way if I do have an issue with the book, um, which I've yet to have uh, a, an issue with one of them falling apart, but if I did I could undo that extra thread and use the matching thread to fix whatever broke in the book. But again, I haven't had that issue. I, I just like to do this. This is just something I do. And we're going to, once again, <laughs> mess with that initial knot that started the whole business. And we're going underneath the knot, between the knot and where that thread goes down for that very first hole. Um, and I usually try and knot it reasonably tight a couple times and then I just trim it and go from there. But yeah, if you have any questions or, I, I don't know, <laughs> if, if you got confused, I apologize, but if you do have questions, um, hit me up in the comments below or send me a message here on YouTube and I will do my best to, to make it less stressful. Okay, now we're giving it a, a bit of a smack around here, make sure it's uh, all sitting the way we want. And that there is roughly what you should have um, when you get done. And like I said, my previous art journal looked just like that. Um, the, the outside papers will get grungy if you do that, so be aware of that. Now I usually, uh, oh wait, that's right, I had to fix the thread. Okay, so unstring your needle, re-thread it with trimmed, you trimmed random rogue piece of thread, which was being a butt. probably could have sped up some of this but I really wanted you to see how long it takes to make this um, 
as much as actually seeing each step. I just pull that through and run it under the previous stitch. I think this one I just knotted, uh, run it under all, all the previous post stitches there, back to the edge. Okay. Oh, the edge was starting to come un unpinged. So, yeah, because it unthreaded itself from the needle, I just went with it there, made a knot, pull it snug, and trim it. And there you go. Um, now I usually just run through and just make sure I like the feel of the book um, and you'll you'll get see how the signatures move from each other um, you could run tape down that seam if you want to I personally love it I think it's great and it helps your book to lay flat um, see. I don't think I did much else to it at, at this point. I usually just run through, make sure it all lays flat, that I like the feel of it, um, that there aren't any issues. Um, make sure I, I caught each hole through the signatures. Um, seeing that that will lay flat even with the one side of the book sitting up taller than like the left side there now sits up taller than the right side but the book still lays flat which really helps when you're doing the art journaling thing and you could use this for anything you don't have to um, I also use this technique for um, making my uh, junk journal type stuff or my glue books and that kind of thing but yeah um, shake it all around see how you like it uh, from here, um, just getting it set up to do the cover. Since this video was so long, I decided to split them up and make two videos. Um, and from here out, they'll have their own folder or uh, playlist. And anything that I do in in this particular journal um, will go in that playlist. So I can hopefully keep it all together. But yeah, I appreciate you guys being here, and I really hope this was helpful. Um, just remember, don't sweat it, do a smaller project and get some practice, and if you bugger it up, it doesn't matter, nobody has to know, but there you go, there's how I do my kettle stitch um, art journal insights. Thanks for being here, I love you, bye!